so I'm gonna teach you how to catch uh, dog bass, also known as red bass. I'm just trying to find a there's plenty around. I'm trying to find that a, a few that actually shoot some water out. So you can easily identify them. There's some I saw around those around those rocks there in the front. Running through how to, to cut the rock bait. Uh, first, you need a permit to catch rock bait or cut rock bait. Um, you need a sharp blade. So normally, you would look for as the water pulls out, you'll see some uh, the rocks get exposed and they start shooting up water. Those rocks are quite far in at the moment, and the water is still covering most of the rocks. So you're not going to really see that there's shoots of water. We'll try and we'll find some around the rock here. Uh, I've already started cutting rock bait. I've got my small uh, little dosh here. It's a small zippler bag with some rock bait in. I don't need much. I just need enough for the session. Uh, yeah, so there's we in the water here. Uh, the water's still sucking out. It's quite deep, so. So these are all your rock bait. So it's all rock bait, most of it at least. As you can see, it's soft. Yeah, so, no. so this is what the fish come and feed on. So I've heard theories. I've heard theories that the bronzies come and they knock the they knock the, the rock bait and like you see like these, these little lice that you find near them and um, worms and stuff, they fall out in the bronze brim crowd there. So I'm not sure how true it is. But uh, yeah, so that's basically one rock bait I've cut. I've left some behind. Um, it's good practice. The one, this whole, this one didn't have anything on the top, so it only had on the bottom. So I left that behind. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to cut a rock bit nice and close. Well, I hope you guys can see it in the camera. So all I do is put my knife through, take a small slip, try not to cut too much. I don't know if you can make out, there's actually like there's actually like pods inside here so basically you stick your finger in and just pull it out okay there's also these rock worms which are uh, you're not allowed to take there's no worms too much in the case it in just pull all these small pieces out oh let's leave that one but it's you know a good ethical practice not to clean all the rock bait out you know, we need to leave some life, uh, it'll help it recover. As well as by leaving some inside. As well as by leaving some of this rock bait inside, you're also allowing for a lot of scent in the water. So, if, as the water sucks out, and also as the fish uh, water uh, fills back in, like when the tide pushes in, the fish will come in and they'll, they'll start to feed off these things. They'll, they'll create a lot of scent in the water. So we're going to attract more fish and hopefully in the pushing tide we catch our fish. Water that's a bit strong here. Slightly deep as well. But yeah, there's another one. I'm gonna dash here. Before the next wave comes to the seaside. You keep an eye on uh, the water at all times, eh? I uh, went before. There's another, there's another lovely example of. That one got me. There's another lovely example of how to take out the rock bait. Stick your finger in and slide it out. There's another piece here. more inside here but like I said not scraping the rocks of all the rock bed okay, I've been to the hole I don't know if you guys can uh, make out 
is moving there. In all his holes and crevices, there's a lot of life. Mostly in his holes, you find uh, you find crabs, and that's what this bush should come for. Eh? These crabs. So I'm not sure what crab this is. Oh, there's a shrimp. Hopefully, before the water knocks it away. Ah, it's gone. Sorry, guys. The water pushed that whole shrimp away. Yeah, that shrimp is gone. Hopefully we caught it on camera. 